Good evening. Well, Brother Sheila was going to bring the message tonight. He said he wasn't going to do that, so you're stuck with me. Be praying, praying about that. Hopefully, you might not leave here this evening saying, I wish Brother Sheely would have brought the message. Hopefully. Romans 10. Romans 10. We're going to be talking about Paul tonight. And I, I've been studying, reading, uh, and I've been in Luke for a little while, but I've got over in Romans this week, and I come across this, and I was reading about Paul, and when I come to uh, Romans chapter 10, the Lord just laid on my heart uh, to be here and bring this message out of, out of this scripture tonight, and I pray that you pray for me as I do this, that uh, I bring the word the way the Lord wants me to, and uh, I pray that each of you uh, might get something out of this, you know, uh, that a desire that we have is the same as the desire that Paul had. I think Paul was a great man of God. And I spoke with a woman this week, uh, Thursday night, about probably around midnight that I was speaking with her. And um, she told me, she said, Brother Ben, when I was in the world, I was 100% in the world. She said, but when the Lord got a hold of me, now I try to be 100% in Him. And you know, I think we would all benefit from that. If we had that same desire. And as I studied this this week. When she was talking to me Thursday night. It really stood out to me. Because that's what Paul's desire was. Paul was 100% against a Christian. I, I mean he went to the folks. He said listen. You give me the letters. I'll go as far as I need to go. To bring them back here to be persecuted. I'll go get them. I'll bring them back. You don't have to do nothing. But sit where you're at. I'm going to take care of these things. But when the Lord got a hold of Paul. He was 100% for the Lord then. And you know, I have no doubt that he looked at the Lord and said, you give me the letters and I'll go as far as I need to go where they can come to you. No doubt that Paul was 100% for the Lord as he was 100% for the world. If you're at Romans chapter 10, say amen. amen. If you're not, say on me. The amens have it. So let's go. Romans chapter 10 starting in verse 1 it says brethren my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God but not according to knowledge for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Moses describeth the righteousness, which is of the law, that the man which does these things shall live by them. But the righteousness, which is of faith, speaketh on this wise, say not in thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above. Or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart of man... With, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then shall they call on him in whom the, and then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, I come to you tonight, Lord, and I just first of all thank you. I thank you for the opportunity to stand in your house, Lord. I thank you for the opportunity to read scripture, to be in your pulpit this evening, Lord, and bring your word. And Lord, I pray that you guide and direct me as I do that. Lord, I pray 
that you hide me behind the cross because, Lord, I don't deserve to be here. But I'm thankful that you allowed me to be here. Lord, I pray that each one of us feel the same way as we sit in your house tonight. Lord, that we don't deserve to be in your house. But, Lord, we're thankful that you allow us to be in your house. Lord, I uplift the ones that are not here tonight, and you know their reasons. Lord, I just pray that you be with them, Lord. I pray that you uh, take care of their sicknesses or whatever it may be that holds them out of your house tonight, Lord. I pray that you just be with them, uplift them, Lord, and I pray that they come back to your house safely. Lord, for the ones that are here, Lord, I uplift them to you. I pray, Lord, that you help us, each one of us that are here tonight, to leave the world outside. Lord, I pray that you be with us tonight and you help us, you burden our hearts, Lord, as the desire that Paul had, Lord. And that, but that takes a relationship with you, Lord. And I pray that you help us with that relationship. That we, that we thrive to go outside of this church house to lead souls to you. Lord, I love you. And I thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You see in verse 10 it said, let me get my contact back in. Verse 10 it said, brethren, my heart's desire is the way it starts out. This was Paul and he was writing to the Romans and he said, listen, brethren, my heart's desire. And I read that and I studied that this week and I got to looking at what Paul's desire was. It didn't say desires. It said desire. One. That was his focus. And his focus was solely one thing, and that was leading people to Christ. Now, I got to thinking about that. And as I studied that this week, I got to looking at myself and what my desires was. And I got to thinking because, again, we're in prayer is what we're talking about in our, in our class out in BTC. And I was looking at that because Paul here, he said, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God. His desire and his prayer was about the same thing. It was about lost souls. That's what it was about. His desire was to carry the gospel to anybody that was lost. How great is that? I got to thinking about Ben Britton's desires, and I got to looking in the mirror this week, and I got to thinking, man, where do I stand compared to where Paul stood? Paul had a relationship with God. He had a relationship with Jesus Christ. And again, once Jesus Christ got to Paul, he was 100% for Jesus. And I just thought about the last week. What was my desire for the last week? Oh, and where I failed at. I ask you, what was your desire last week? There's so many of us that our desires consist of my job. I got to do well at my job. Lord, help me with my job. Lord, be with me at my job. Lord, help me do my job. Job, 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 job. There's so many of us that our desires is family. Lord, take care of my family. Lord, help me provide for my family. Lord, whatever my family does, let them. Family, 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 family. What is your desire? So many of us have desires that is outside of what God's will is. And His will is for you and I to carry the gospel to the lost. Oh, a world that we live in, a world that we all say, oh, it's going down the drain. This country's just getting worse and worse and worse. Why? Maybe it's because of our desires. You with me? All right. Paul said right here, he said, brethren, my heart's desire and my prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Oh man, Paul's desire for a dying and lost soul that if something happened to them, they die and go to hell. What is our desires? Our desires is to make it good. Our desires is to please everybody. Our desire is to comfort the people that come through the church doors. Our desire is to keep everybody happy. Our desire is to please everyone. When our desire should be leading them to salvation. That should be our desire. Paul had that. From the minute he was stricken down on the road. Understand that. From the minute that Ananias walked in there and laid his hands on Paul 
And Paul accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior. From that moment on, his desire was to absolutely allow everybody else to have what he got. Salvation. Oh my. What is our desire? We were talking about that in Sunday school class this morning. How we told a hope with us. Jesus Christ. And our world outside of us is dying and going to hell. And they're going to hell vaccinated. And they're going to hell unvaccinated. Because we told a hope that we selfishly hold on to. Paul said, oh my desire and my prayer is that all of Israel, not one, not two, but all of Israel find salvation. And you know what that meant? That meant day in and day out, he worked to get the gospel to those people. Now tell me again what our desire is. Because I guarantee you the desires of our heart is what we do daily. Where we go daily. How much we study God's word daily. How much we stay on our knees in prayer daily. Our desires of our heart, our true desire. We're not fooling God. Our true desires is what we daily do. What is our desires? I think about Paul. Paul got to Rome. You know how he got to Rome? In prison. That's how he got there. And yet he wrote and he penned, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. That's my hope. Listen, our hope should be that folks outside this church house, folks in our family, our friends, our family, the neighbors that we run into daily, the man at the gas pump, the lady that we met at the gas station, the, the man that, that bummed $20 off of us, the one that needed gas that we longed to, the one that called us a bad name on the interstate, our desire should be that they find salvation. What is our desires? Again, I'll bring this back up and a lot of you will moan and groan because you say, Brother Ben, you need to quit talking about it. But our reactions, they show our desires. We can plan the actions, remember? But we don't plan the reactions. And our reactions, folks, they show our desires. God knows our desires. We have to admit to it to fix it. Paul, he wrote to him, he said, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. A desire was not enough. He also prayed about it. We've been talking about prayer in our, in our class in BTC and how great prayer is because you know what? It's our conversation with God. It's how we visit with Him. And I thought, you know, studying that has helped me a lot because I realized I didn't stay in prayer as much as I thought I did. I didn't stay in conversation with my God as much as I thought I did. And you know what? It's a balance. Because it's not just reading this word daily. But it's talking to Him daily. Because that's how we get our answers back, right? That's how we get our questions to Him. And then we're reading this and He's answering us back. Our prayer life with God. And Paul said, listen, my heart's desire. Not only my heart's desire, but my prayer for Israel. Is that they find salvation. They find the Savior that I have. What is our desire? What is our prayer? We talk about the good old times. How things used to be when the church houses was full. When the people came to revivals two weeks at a time in a tent for heaven's sake. Not in a church with AC. But I promise you, their desire and their prayer was about lost souls. Amen. And listen to me. When our desire and our prayer becomes about lost souls. Oh, oh, how the world will change. I think about Paul. I think about Paul and he's saying here his desire for Israel. And I thought about reading this and studying this and I started reading about where Paul went and I saw how much beyond Israel that his desire went. And his prayers went. 
It wasn't just the Israelites that he was talking to. I thought about Paul when he stood before King Agrippa. And he spoke to him. And what he'd give him, he gave him his testimony. Folks, each one of you have that. That's how he carried the gospel. He showed the people what God done for him. And he told him, this is where I was. This is what happened. And this is where I am now. And the king stood before him and said, Oh, I was almost persuaded. And I think about our president today. And I think, Oh, Ben, where's your desires at? Because I'm one of the first ones that I gripe about him. I'm one of the first ones that I talk about him. But how soon do I pray for him? Because that's what Paul said. You can bet before Paul stepped up there and looked at that king, he had been in prayer. You know why? Because he was praying for every lost soul. What are we doing? And what's our desire? He said, for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. What he was saying there is the same thing we can see in the world today. There's folks outside of this church house, there's folks all over the world that know God that don't know God. There's people that will bow down to something. You know why? Because they know there's a God. They do. Absolutely they know that. But they'll bow down to the sun. They'll bow down to the sea. They'll bow down to money. You know why? Because they're searching. This goes back to the hope that you and I have. Those folks are searching for that hope. And they're turning to the wrong gods. You know why? Because they have the zeal of God, but they don't have the knowledge of God. You know why? What is our desires? What's our desires? What's our prayer? That's why a lot of folks have a zeal of God, but not a knowledge. Because our desires are not what they should be. He said, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness. And you know what? We as a world today, we as Christians today, we'll go all around this word because we don't want to offend nobody. Well, let me tell you, ignorant is a good word. Because ignorant means untaught. That means you have a chance, folks. You can be ignorant and be okay. Because you have a chance that you can learn. Understand that. That's what Paul said. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness, they don't understand God's righteousness. He said in going about to establish their own righteousness. Here's the issue that we have. Here's the issue that I have. I won't even put it off on we. I'll put it off on me. The issue that I have is I understand God's righteousness and I still work for my own. And guess what? That shows me where my desires are. That's the truth. I pray that this affects you as much as it affects me. Because if our desires do not lay with God, do not lay with Jesus Christ, then you and I are not doing what we're supposed to be doing. And our world will not change. The people around us will not change. You know why? Because our righteousness stinks. But God's is so much better. And if you and I desire to share Him, with others, the same desire that Paul had. The same desire that aided him day in and day out. I need to see somebody else. I need to talk with somebody else. He said in the end there was no blood on, on his hands. Why? Because everybody he spoke to knew who his Savior was. Why? Because of his desire and his prayer. What is our desire? What is our prayer? Where are we at tonight? Where do we stand before Jesus? He said right here, For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. They knew all about God, but yet they tried to make themselves better by going about their own understanding, by going about their own righteousness, and not turning to God for His righteousness. Are we doing the same thing? Day in and day out, are we doing that? Are we trying to prove ourselves to men and not approve ourselves of God? He said, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone 
that believeth. Now I'm going to read that again because I want you to understand that's important. It said, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, he took the law away. Why? Because he is the law. When he rose again, guess what? He completed the law. The law was done as far as written law. Now it lives in Jesus Christ. Understand that. It's a living law. And the only way that we're going to be able to get to heaven is through that law, which is Jesus Christ. Do you all agree? All right. So our desire should be carry that to other people where they have that opportunity. Amen? What is our desire? Where are we at? What are we doing? He said, For Moses describeth the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth, doeth those things shall live by them. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on the wise. Say not in thine heart, Who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee. Even in the mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. I'm telling you, you can look into this and you can read it, but I can tell you what the Lord said to me about this when I read it. He says, Ben, if you desire to carry the gospel to a lost and dying world, I will give you the words to talk to them. That's what it says to me. I will provide the words that you need. All I need you to do is have the desire and go. What is our desire? Where are we at? Folks, each and every day, God puts people in our lives. It may be somebody that's trying to sell you car insurance. I've sat on the phone for an hour talking to a lady about Jesus Christ and we started out over a cell phone conversation. Over an hour. Got to pray with her and talk to her about the Lord. Finding out things and she says, I got to go because I'm going to get fired. And I said, you're not bothering me a bit. If you, don't, if you can just stay with me just a little bit, Lord will give you another job. Folks, it's all what we desire to do and if we're willing to do it. Because God's good. Amen. And he said, listen, I'm going to provide for you. All you got to do is go. But what's our desire? He said that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Again, whosoever, whosoever, whosoever. We see that in the scripture wrote out several different times. And here we read it again. Whosoever. So what is our desire? Is it just our close friends? Or is it whosoever? Because I'm going to tell you, I fall into that category. I fall into the whosoever category. And I'm going to tell you another secret. I'm thankful that I read about a man that said, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. And I'm glad that he went beyond Israel. I'm glad that he listened to the word and he carried the gospel to the Gentiles. Because I don't know how many of you are Jews, but I am not. And Paul carried the gospel. And I'm thankful for that. Let me ask you this question. I know this ain't about you and I. But how many people are thankful that you brought the gospel? How many people? When you get to heaven, there's a song that says thank you. 
How many people are going to come up and thank you that you brought the gospel? What's our desire? What's our prayer? Is our desire to do God's work? Is our desire to do God's will? Is our desire to carry the gospel to a lost and dying world? Because he said, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Again, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Thank you, Lord. Verse 14 said, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Listen close. Brother Sheely and I are not the only two preachers in this church. Anyone that has salvation, anyone that has Jesus Christ as their Savior can preach the gospel. What we have to ask ourselves is what is my heart's desire and what is my prayer as our musicians come. Where do you stand at tonight? Here in this church house, this moment, right now. Not your neighbor, not your wife, not your sister, your brother, your uncle, your son, your daughter, none of that. Where do you stand with the Lord? What is your desire with the Lord? What is your prayer to the Lord. Paul said, My desire, my prayer, is that they may be saved. What is yours as we sing? Page 282.